Recently, I had an experience where the tomato plant growing beside me here had collapsed. It was over the weekend and I came back in and the total plant had just wilted completely across the uh, table that it's on. And so I thought I would talk a little bit about what happens with using crack key hydroponics in small containers. There is an issue with a lot of people's uh, setups where they don't quite understand that as a plant grows, and I'll use a second jar to illustrate, uh, the plant is in a net pot and as it starts to grow, the roots will extend through the holes into the net pot deep into the jar. Now, depending on where you keep your nutrient level, say for example, if you keep it at the base of that net cup, which is about right for this size container, if you allow the water to drop down towards the bottom for an extended period of time, and then you were to fill the nutrient until it comes back up here, uh, the roots that are exposed to air, the gas exchange roots, will not suddenly revert and be able to pick up water in this section because once they become gas exchange roots, they're dedicated in that function. So one of the things that we tell new users is, um, have a, a little window or if you have a clear glass, uh, wrap it with paper, put a sock around it, something to keep the light from causing algae inside the jar. But try to keep your nutrient water at the base of that net cup. Now, in addition to that, uh, there is another uh, situation that I encountered and it's worth mentioning that with a plant as it becomes larger and the roots become bigger, fill up more of the jar, that even though you're doing a very good job of keeping the nutrient uh, steady at this point in time by topping it off uh, daily, that over the weekend, if it's not monitored, that the plant can use all of the nutrient, and that's what happened to me. And I will show you today uh, what I did and how you can avoid situations like that in the future. 